So Thursday night, I was talking about <clears throat> Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, and we were discussing how he is the Apostle to the Gentiles. And we may think, you know, I mean, probably all of us in this room basically is, is Gentile. Um, but how hard it was for the Jews to accept that, the Christian Jews even. And um, to grasp the difficulties that came because <clears throat> um, sin was an issue. Sin was an issue. And so, you know, we, if, if you've ever tried to imagine what was going on in the ark when Noah was, you know, and you didn't even have a good idea where this boat was going. We know where the, our boat's going. But they... But, but he didn't. And by nature, the, um, many of those animals that were in the ark were enemies of something else in that ark. And that's a picture of what the Lord's doing with us and doing with others. <clears throat> So let's turn to Romans. Um, <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. I'll just start with that. And we covered Romans 1 on our Thursday night classes before we jumped ship and went over to Noah. Um, and <clears throat> verse 13 is one of my favorite scriptures verses in the whole Bible forever. And it says, Now I would not have you ignorant brethren. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. Thank God for commas, huh? <clears throat> Actually, that's my spin on it when I get... Uh, Weary. <laughs> now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let heretofore, or hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you. And he's, he's writing to the Romans, and, and the Romans that he's writing to are Gentiles, and we'll see that here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> I purposed to come unto you, but was let, or not allowed to, up to that point, that I might have some fruit among you <clears throat> also, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Now, I would think <clears throat> that have a clash with somebody that is not used to you, like the Romans were with the Jews. Romans didn't like the Jews. And there were plenty of cl clashes. <clears throat> um, that there would be animosity on both sides and extreme dislike. But Paul is talking about here, I want to I wanna go there. I want to be among you as with I have been with other Gentiles. And this guy was put in one of the hardest situations, as was Noah. <laughs> That's one reason why we jumped there. And then, <clears throat> um, even as among other Gentiles, verse 14, but I am a debtor both to the Greeks, which are Gentiles, and to the barbarians, which are Gentiles, both to the wise and to the unwise, which is probably 
referring to just the Gentiles there because that's what he said up to that point. And he's saying he's the debtor instead of they're his debtor. <clears throat> we, don't, we don't know what would happen if we just waited, you know, this deep into the water to be there by the life of Christ for people that we hitherto disliked. But God is doing that with us. And he's doing the same thing. He was doing the same thing with Paul. It's not different. He's doing the same thing. <clears throat> and he says, I like that he, th he threw in barbarians. <laughs> you know, do we, you know, that bar barbarians can hurt us if they don't like what's going on. <clears throat> Both of the wise and the unwise. So much so, uh, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. Wow. Wow. Man, oh man. You're asking for it. <clears throat> you really are. I mean, this is like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a, and probably most of y'all don't do that. I, I, I watch the news and, and uh, uh, the commercials come on. And one of my favorite ones is this one where this guy is watching apparently a movie and it's only showing him right here. And you can see the, by the light flashing everything, he's watching a movie. And there's all these creatures that's, that look like uh, Lord of the Rings, the orcas or something like that, sitting all around him and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and then after the, they get to looking at it, uh, um, he's just annoyed because they're all bumping into him and hitting him. And the, uh, the commercial says, there are free radicals out there. <laughs> and, you know, that... Um, and, and one of them bumps into him because he's, he's laughing, the, the orc, or orc or whatever he's called. And he's, he bumps into him, you know, like, isn't that funny? And he kind of jerks. He's, you know, he goes, yeah. And he's trying to watch this thing, and he's surrounded by all this stuff. That's what I think it's going to be like for Paul. <laughs> you know? And he will be in prison, you know. Um, <clears throat> And if you think about that, that's pretty powerful. But he, um, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of salvation, the good news of Christ, the good news of the Son. Uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth everyone, to the Jew first, to everyone. And, you know, the simple, simplest scripture that everybody knows, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. I, it's interesting that he uses the world. He didn't say, for God so loved all people. He just included everything the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever in that group chose to believe, you see? Yeah. Because it's already done for everyone on, you know, in the world, is it not? Yes. It is. Again, Jesus is not going to have to you know, go die for everybody's sins and some new person was born in a faraway country, you know, last week and they sinned or something like that and now he's got to go die for them. He already died for all sin. And yeah, done. Done. 
Is that where we got that name? <laughs> so he says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Also, also, also. Verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And the just are the justified. The just are not uh, the ones. Uh, you could say it's not even necessarily the ones that have received it yet. Um, but it is in the sense that the work is done for them. So now he brings up faith. The just will live by faith. So what does that mean? Well, faith in this reality, as simple as it is, faith in this is all that's required. You just have to believe that he did do that. It's all. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you were, for example, if you were hearing this for the first time and you just happened to be a visitor and you came in the room and you were listening to this and you, it, all of a sudden it hit you, that, if that, is that really true? You know, they'd probably be jumping around laughing in glory, you know, praise God. They'd say something like, it's glorious. <laughs> well, the news is coming. It's glorious. It's wonderfully glorious. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. <clears throat> so, I wanted to... I'm not going to read this whole thing because I don't think you can you can take it. But you, I already put you through it once, and this is Romans one, <clears throat> where it talks about the Gentiles and how bad they were. Anybody remember this little section? Okay, good. It's pretty rough, but he's talking to Gentiles. And he's starting Romans with how bad they were. And we don't even get hardly, you know, to third chapter that we're seeing that it's all been taken care of. And we're all in the same ark. <clears throat> and so there is a, a, an awakening an awakening. And you know, because I've, I've emphasized it, that it cannot be just the hearing of this and, and not, a nodding toward it. You know, yes, okay. The Lord, and in fact, we'll get into those scriptures, but I'll just read a little bit of this right, right here. I won't get to the real bad stuff. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter. But <clears throat> because that when they knew God, this is talking about the Gentiles. And then later, in a, the later chapter, he'll set up the Jews and say, and you, you did this and this and this and this. He's trying to bring everybody under condemnation so that they will receive what's free. If you make it bad enough, you go, oh, my God, I'm in trouble. When you're in it, it's, you know, it doesn't matter how simple or hard it is, difficult it is. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like an unto corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed beast and creeping things. Now, every time when I find the word creeping things, my mind goes to Noah because it, it quotes a lot. 
You know, it's telling you how bad this uh, payload is on this arc, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, it's rough. <clears throat> um, verse 24, so here's how bad it was. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Okay, so there, you know, why would God just turn them over to it? <clears throat> we would say, well, they need to be destroyed on the spot. So do we. So do we. There is none righteous. You know, see, you need to get that in you now because when, you, when we get up and we stand before God and Jesus is on the throne, everybody around you is going to be saying, Thou art worthy. Only you are worthy. The Lamb is worthy. And you're going to have to go, oh, oh, instead of saying, I'm worthy. That's why I'm up here. That's a no-no by the time you get to that level. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that one. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to skip down now to this, the main scripture I wanted to get to, at least further into. Um, and this is Ephesians 3, uh, verse 1. Ephesians 3, verse 1. <clears throat> For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Is there any cost? Would you go any length for Gentiles? For the outcast? For the ones that would make you sick or whatever, lepers or whatever. He says, I'm a prisoner for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, a dispensation of the grace of God, Paul is not just walking around with a theological thing in his head. He is living in a dispensation of the grace of God for any and all that will call upon his name. And it even goes further than that, but we're not going to get into that right now. He's, he sees it as this is my life. I am a prisoner for you Gentiles. I am. They may not understand that. <clears throat> it, might, it may not be a situation where he's even behind bars at that time. But he knows what he is. <clears throat> he could have been more like, uh, what's the name of that guy that got swallowed by a whale? <laughs> Could have been more like him. If you remember the story and you get down at the end of it, it's pretty rough, people. Right. Oh, my God. God had already forgiven the, the, the evil. The what? Yeah. He'd already bore it. And, and guess who? Board, who was the prisoner actually and didn't understand it but still was put through it. Just Jonah. Jonah was. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so the dispensation of the grace of God, the grace of God, not the grace of God known in, you know, modern day Christianity or in, in the way that we we twist it to, to mean that God graciously, um, you know, gave me a new car or graciously did that or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with these guys are the biggest rejects. This is Paul talking about the Gentiles. These guys are the biggest rejects. They're the worst people to me. And, and I'm going to kill them all or I'm going to throw them all in prison and I'm going to because it was that way among the Jews 
But now he says, I'm yours. And I'm connected to you in a dispensation of grace. And I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm going to keep going and keep going my whole life until they cut my head off. And do you think, you know, they said, okay, today's the day. We're coming in and we're going to cut your head off. You think he, he thought, well, that's going to be tough because my head is the sun. Could somebody live that way? Could somebody really believe that really in the face of danger? Yeah. Folks, we've had a whole lot of people that went way before us that walked through the, you know, walked into the lion's den. And some came out and some didn't. Some laid down their life to the glory of God. And some were delivered to the glory of God. Doesn't matter. What matters is that we have not the shadow of the deliverance. Oh, lions, the lions just laid there and they didn't growl at me. There's something greater going on, folks. There's beasts that are being converted. <laughs> you know, in the presence of God. <clears throat> so, um, the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you word. I love that. Because he already mentioned who this is to, prisoner to the Gentiles. And this grace is given to me for you word. You word. You. Toward you. 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 To you. It is a dispensation that we're walking in. It's not an event. It is a dispensation. It's not a momentary thing. And if we realize that, if we realize that, then there will be outstanding giving that will not in our hearts be counted as loss. But, but, but Him. But Him. The one in whom we are the one who was a prisoner and then was slain on a cross. <clears throat> and we would say, we're one. We're one. We're one. And when Jesus died on that cross, there were Gentiles that were slapping him and beating him and <clears throat> whipping him and doing all of that. He didn't say, you guys better watch it. You're going to push it too, hard, too far here. You ever done that in your head with somebody? You're going you're gonna to push it too far, and then I'm going to withdraw my grace, and I'm going to slap the fire out of you. <laughs> to the glory of God. Have mercy. But we live in a dispensation of that. <clears throat> so he goes on. Verse 3, how that by revelation, how that by revelation it was made known unto me, made known unto me the mystery, the mystery. <clears throat> if you can pick this up like that, if you can understand all this just like that, if you can grasp it all that quick, then there's probably something wrong. I don't have it all, I know that. But, but you can get deep in enough where you're never going to turn back. <laughs> you're gonna go, I just love this, you know. I don't love it just for myself. I love the magnitude of it. And I love the heart from whence it came. Because it's about a, a hymn, not an event. So... <clears throat> Whereby, um, let's say, toward you, how that by revelation made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words. I can't imagine Paul writing few words any time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The man, his sentences go on and on, on and on and on forever. You, you, I keep looking for the period. And there's a comma, and then there's a, you know. <clears throat> um, 
made known the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, <clears throat> whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. See, so folks, I know why God gave me the title world of the world of done, but let it never become something that title in itself. No. It's him. It's him. <laughs> it's gloriously him. Thank God. <clears throat> verse 5, which in other ages, so he's, he's talking about verse 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he's talking to Gentiles and he's saying, so that you may understand my, it, it's, it's a big deal to them. Do you see that? It's a big deal to them that he has this, that he's seen this, that it's, and that he's, he's glorying in the, in the effect that it's going to bring to them. <clears throat> Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 6, that the Gentiles, and I love this string of words, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ. He's talking about Gentiles. We're talking about Gentiles. You're saying, well, we're the Gentiles, so we're getting it. I'm this this uh, fountain that's shooting up for me? Yeah, of course it is. But we're coming into a realization that it's, it's for the Gentiles, but we have a responsibility yes. to know it, first of all, and to carry it. <clears throat> Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. This is good stuff. This is, this is amazing stuff. I want you to think of the worst beast that you can that's not a Jew. Think of that one. I remember, I remember when we were on Maple and Welsh. And um, we started up the, um, what do we call it? Yeah, the, the yeah, Denton Gospel Mission and the, the alcohol and, and <clears throat> drug program. We, we were doing all that. And so we started bringing them in and they would, they would sit on the back pew way back over in the far left if you were facing this way. And... <clears throat> I loved seeing them, you know. And, and some of you are going, well, that's because you were one of them once. You filthy dog. Roo, roo, roo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I was then. <clears throat> but I knew it would probably be hard on some people. <clears throat> but it was the Lord then. My God, we were the first women's and men's shelter in Denton County. Do you know that? Yes. We were the first. Now they have Salvation Army here, and Salvation Army, when they got ready to come, came straight to us and said, we're thinking about doing what y'all are doing, and is that going to be a problem for you or whatever? And we said, no. As a matter of fact, you know, you have resources that we don't have. So... Um, Fellow heirs, fellow heirs. That means, that means you're going to have to rub elbows with them for all eternity. <coughs> Same body. Same body, says right there. It even has a the in front of it. <laughs> the same body. And partakers and partakers 
I, they could have used any word there, partakers of the promise in Christ. They could have said, uh, and they, they also believed this. But apparently they were partakers. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just you're hugging and you're eating and you're, you're just taking it all in. <clears throat> partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister. Yes, you were, Brother Paul. According to, here's, here's his testimony now. I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. This wasn't, this wasn't Paul. Folks, this wasn't Paul. We know what Paul was like. Man, he brutalized the Jews. I mean, the, well, the Jews that also turned. <clears throat> Grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay. I just want to, I'm not done, and I want to just pray, and then we'll move on, okay? Yeah. Right here, the same body, the fellow heirs, partakers of his promise in Christ. <clears throat> Whereas I am made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Father, we want to believe for, for each and every one of us to just be overwhelmed with the effectual working, not just some sort of little movement that passes, but an effectual working by grace that is given to us. The effectual working of your power in each and every one of us, Father, so that your plan and your way from, from Father, from all the way back to Abraham, when he saw all those stars, and that was counted to him for faith. Father, work in us this by life, by your Son, but but we're our members of the same body and of the same gifts so expanded in us, Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given. Well, that, that'd be a pretty good clue right there. I want you to know that'd be a really good clue if you want to get a bunch of effectual stuff. Be Start working toward being less than the least. I mean, in Christianity, it's the exact opposite. Everybody's knocking over one another. Oh, I want to be that, and I want to have that, you know. And I want to do something that's, you know, out up front and be seen and all of this stuff. And, you know, we're actually hid in Christ, so we need to stop popping out. It's almost like he's got a bunch of pocket pockets pockets and burn somebody pops out of him and then boom, boom, boom. It's like, get back in there what's that game called whack-a-mole whack so um, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach that I should preach among the, the Gentiles that I should preach among the Gentiles It's a gift. It's a gift. It's not a, I mean, yeah, Paul went through all kind of hardship. It's not, you know, he kept going because it was a gift. He kept going because he, he didn't earn it. He kept going because it was an effectual working of God working in him by grace. Oh. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. 
see, we're still talking about this Gentile ministry to make all men, all men see. Well, I want all men, he's saying. I want all men to see the fellowship. But Paul, if you keep praying that, there's going to be Gentiles who are going to be coming into the fellowship. <laughs> and we can't have that. Yes, we can. You're saying, we don't want those dirty Gentiles. Let me look around and find who's a Gentile in here. <laughs> among the Gentiles, well, is this grace given that I should preach him among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ because we're one with him, so they are his riches, they are his gifts, they are his blessing, they are his being, that now we are not burdened and carrying so much fear and anxiety of trying to be this or that or whatever. And, you know, the Lord can deal... The Lord can deal with you. He can deal with you over, well, you know, you're, you're too proud or you're too this or that. The Lord can deal with you over that. But that's not what this is talking about. We don't need a dealing because it goes away. Have you ever at one point in your walk been so on fire you thought, I'm going to live this way forever and then look back and go, what a mess I am. <laughs> When did I make that turn? <clears throat> no, it's, the, it's all that effectual working by his power. And when we read this, and this is the only reason why I'm taking probably more time, but when we read this, or when we think of the world of done, we need to start thinking in terms of this is ours. It's here right now. I mean, that's what our little flyer says. And it's here and it's glorious. It is here and it's glorious. And it's among us. And, and God is doing like breaking forth like he did with Paul with the Gentiles. And it's glorious. And he's glorious. And... Anything he puts his nail-scarred hands to is glorious. Yes. Verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. We are not talking about a little movement of God. We're talking about something that was before the foundation of the world. There it is. Did you get what scripture that was? It's in verse 9. I'll read it again. Verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, Okay, yes, yes, amen. We're, we're working hard at that. We're doing this and that. <clears throat> Which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, which is all his attempts to just drag all of you to hell it's been messed up. From the beginning of the world hath been hidden God who created all things, Jesus Christ. But now is made manifest. But now is made known. <clears throat> um... I'm going to finish that verse. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus. So this phrase or, or sentence here uh, 
in verse 10 says, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm going to present this as a sandwich, okay? If you're hungry, I'm sorry. You can't eat this sandwich. <laughs> but this, that I'm going to give you the sides of it, and then I'm going to show you what the middle of it is, okay? <clears throat> uh, to make all men see, verse 9, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Uh, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ. So there is this mystery that's being made known and it is being made known. We are, nobody, nobody's got it in the sense of, well, I've got it all. It's no, you know, this, we're in Ephesians. Ephesians says that throughout the eternal ages to come, we shall be learning the riches of Christ, which is, which is what? His fullness. His fullness. So this is saying that, <clears throat> that a grace was given concerning uh, the unsearchable riches of Christ which from the beginning of the world had been hidden God, who created all things by Christ. And the intention was that now unto the principalities and powers might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. The wisdom of God would be what? According to, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Boldness. Boldness. I mean, that, that means secure. I got, I'm secure. I can be bold. You know? So the, you know, what is our righteousness? It's our faith. Faith is counted to us for righteousness. And the righteous are bold as a lion. I didn't say, never mind, I won't say that. According to the eternal purpose he purposed in his Son, in whom we have boldness and access. We have boldness. We can walk around and boldly say, I am in Christ. We can walk around boldly and say, I'm not what I used to be. That one is dead. You can say that. And I went, I went through that fight when I was in Bible school in reading the scriptures and being shared with, well, you're dead, you know, and I'd, I'd do something, I'd say, well, I'd, whatever I'd do, I'd say, well, I guess I'm not dead. That's not the goal, is to believe the, the circumstances over the eternal truth. That's not the goal, to believe circumstances over eternal truth. You are dead but you have to reckon yourself dead. And that's not in a Texas way. I reckon I'm dead. No, no. You have to reckon yourself dead in circumstances and situations and everything else and say, well, you know, what, whatever that was, that's not me. I'm one with him and found in him. I am found in him. I am accepted in him. Instead of looking at it going, well, oh, God, I'm a mess. I should never go to church again. Well, that's, you know, who won that battle then? <laughs> you know, well, I, just, I think everybody just looks at me and goes, I'm a failure. Uh, I really doubt that, okay? I really do. I don't think there's anybody in here that everybody looks at you and goes, you're just a failure. You're just so, such a big mess that we're all not what we're supposed to be if we're not being found in Him. So stop trying to be, I, I probably need to try to find that scripture, but I, I'm, why am I holding back? <laughs> there's, there's something really good that I, I need to add soon. That's in Romans 7. 
oh, it's good. And it'll explain a lot. It'll explain a lot. All right, so let me, let me jump down to, and this will be my first ending, verse 21. <clears throat> Unto him <laughs> be glory. Amen? Okay, well, he's not getting glory when you're looking at yourself by your first birth instead of by your new birth. You're not that same person. You say, I, I'm doing the same thing. I don't care if you're doing worse than you did before. You are in him. And until you grasp that to such a degree that you hold on and will not be moved, then there is, the boat's going to rock, but it's not going to sink. You'll just, you know, it's going to rock, but there won't be any roll with it. In other words, you're not going to be singing rock tunes. You're going to be freaking out. Well, he has, while he has sat down and the work was finished and we're supposed to come boldly, boldly, boldness, Boldness and access with confidence Amen. by the faith of him. And he says this. Amen. And you say, well, I believe what you say. Yes. I believe it. This is a dispensation of grace. Yes. I'm going to walk in it. Amen. I'm not going to just be a Christian. I'm not going to just go to church. I'm not going to just do things for God. I want to be swallowed up, fully swallowed up in this thing because you are. And the only way to get swallowed up in that way is to start agreeing with it and saying, no, that's not me and that's not who I am in Jesus. Amen. And you can, you know, talk back. You can say, you're wrong. Talk back to yourself. You're wrong. That's not what the Word of God says. Well, the Word of God says, you know, if you do bad, you're going to go to hell. You haven't heard of the, the good news yet, the mystery that's been unveiled. <laughs> Glory to God. Mm. Man, I love you guys. I don't, you know, you never know how much I love you. I got almost all of your pictures on my wall upstairs where I sit in my desk. And all I got to do is look up on that. The, the roof goes like this. So, and all I got to do is just look over right there and I can see all of you. The funny thing is, is that it also helps me because all of you are smiling. <laughs> you know, but I pray for you. And I, I join hearts with you for a desire to, to fulfill the Word of God, is the way Paul put it. To fulfill the Word of God. But it's not us fulfilling it, it's us agreeing with it, and therefore it is fulfilled and, and can be manifested then. Not just a doctrine received. So, Father, we've got, we've got so much going on. We've got gravity, we've got the gathering, we've got so many things probably at our house, our car breaking down or this not working or whatever. But our desire, not for some event, yes. but to swallow us up yes. in a good way, like in the whale, so that we are swallowed up of you. And you use those words in the New Testament. And so we just ask, and, and I ask, continue.
continue to pour forth from all that is you into them. Open their eyes of their understanding. Father, may, may the sharings that are going on on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and may, may they be effectual. May they be the bread of life. May they be that which will, will fill them instead of what they, they are trying to get hold of. Father, you've got us and you started this. You did. And I know with everything in me that you didn't start this so that we would fall back and say, well, I, I couldn't make it or something. No, you have already done it. May, may the new become glorious to every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen.